You've downloaded Science in Action, November the 3rd, 2016 edition from the BBC World Service. I'm Roland Pease. There's been another powerful earthquake in central Italy, near the city of Perugia. Initial reports put the magnitude at 6.6. Some buildings have collapsed, although there's been no word on casualties. Nearly 300 people were killed in an earthquake in the region in August. The news on Sunday morning had an alarming sense of déjà vu. There's been a series of earthquakes in central Italy, some strong enough to bring down buildings and to kill people, others weaker but still enough to cause panic. Fortunately, no one did die on Sunday, but the concern must be there's more and there's worse to come. The affected towns are all on the spine of mountains that run the length of Italy, the Apennines, and they're all packed with buildings that are extremely vulnerable to the shaking that accompanies the tectonic convulsions, which seismologist Ross Stein says started seven years ago. In 2009, the L'Aquila earthquake, a magnitude 6.2, an earthquake of that size would kill essentially no one in the United States took 300 lives and caused a national trauma in all ways, destroying a beautiful old town and raising issues about whether or not we could or couldn't predict earthquakes. This Amatrice earthquake, which was a 6.2 as well, struck, oh, about 40 kilometers to the northwest of L'Aquila, and once again this earthquake destroyed a beautiful old medieval town and took almost as many lives. And then the process has unfolded to what almost is a falling domino sequence of earthquakes that are extending farther to the northwest. I mean, it is that unfolding. It's very unfamiliar to me, but you think these are all connected somehow. Well, first, earthquakes in Italy tend to occur more in groups or sequences than a lot of other places in the world. This is somewhat unique to Italy. It's not a striking difference, but it's a noticeable one. And it's probably because the faults there are relatively young, less than a million years old. Compare that to the San Andreas, which is over 10 million years old. So these are little kind of broken shards of faults that haven't really been organized by repeated earthquakes into a long, continuous, smooth fault. So that means that if you jostle one, you tend to move the others around it, and no one fault is able to rupture for a very long distance and produce a very large earthquake. So we get these little groups or families of moderate-sized events. But it's interesting that you mentioned L'Aquila. That was several years ago. There was some pre-rumbling that happened. I'm not sure what was going on afterwards. Then in August you have one, so that's a long separation. And then a few weeks later you've got another one and then another one. You know, the timing as well as the distance between these events seems curious to me. I'm not sure what to make of it. Well, it's interesting. Take a typical earthquake, say a magnitude 6. It's going to produce aftershocks. Aftershocks have a unique property. The longer you go by in time, the more spread out they are. But their magnitudes don't get smaller with time. So if you think about the largest earthquake in the first day, that'll be about the same as the largest earthquake in the next 10 days, and that'll be about the same as the largest earthquake in the next 100 days, etc., So while we are, yes, uh, six or seven years downstream from the L'Aquila earthquake, it is still the time period in which earthquakes are interacting. And if we stacked up all these earthquakes that we've just had, L'Aquila, Amatrice, Norcia, the most recent one, and the somewhat smaller ones, you'd see the same phenomena, which is it's more likely to have earthquakes hours apart than years apart, but there's still that possibility. So you can still view all of these earthquakes as part of a conversation between faults. I want to come to where that's going shortly, but first can I ask a bit about the past? You know, these are beautiful towns. They're fragile towns, which is why people are being killed there and buildings are being brought down. But those buildings are often being built out of local rock. And this is in this sort of long spine of mountains down the middle of Italy called the Apennines which were presumably built out of these kinds of events over millions of years. That's right. One of the things that's remarkable is that Italy was being compressed until about a million years ago, and so we had faults that tended to respond to the fact that the whole area was in a vice. And then that 
turned around. The area is now being stretched. And so now the faults are asked to do something quite different than they were born to do. And everything is reorganizing around that process of change. But during the historical record of the last thousand or two thousand years, there have been lots of earthquakes in the Apennines. The most recent and dangerous ones were kind of a 20 days of terror in 1703, when big earthquakes ruptured through the same area that we're experiencing earthquakes today and decimated these beautiful Italian hill towns. We've seen this pattern going on now for seven years or so. How can you tell if there's continued danger, if there are going to be more earthquakes in the same area or more earthquakes to the north or to the south of this area? Well, in a broad way, this is an easy question. There will be more earthquakes, and we'll call those aftershocks. So generally, aftershocks are smaller than the main shock, but sometimes an aftershock is larger than the main shock. And then seismologists like me do this semantical trick. We just call the main shock a foreshock, and we call the aftershock a main shock. And you think we know something, but we know nothing. So the answer to the question is, yes, there will be more earthquakes. Most of them will be smaller than the ones we've seen, but it's always possible that one of those aftershocks or one of those subsequent shocks will be larger than what we've seen. And the Italian Institute of Geophysics has calculated that a number of the faults that have yet to slip have been stressed by the earthquakes that have already taken place. So not only do we expect more earthquakes, probably smaller, but maybe not, we also know that there are faults that have been loaded by these events and are now closer to fail than they were before these events began. Ross Stein talking to me just hours before another Magnitude 5 did hit the region Thursday morning. There's a link to his organisation, temblor.net, with much more analysis of the developing situation on the Science in Action website at bbcworldservice.com.